Hello again, and welcome back to another Applied Energistics 2 mod integration tutorial. This video is going to be looking at automating thermal expansion, in particular magma crucibles and the fluid transposers, and how we can set up the system to auto-craft tesseracts with one click. As always, any likes and comments on the video will be greatly appreciated, as it helps the channel grow and improves the content. Thanks. To get started with this video, I've just got a basic ME system set up, as you can see, with a controller and some drives and some terminals. As well on either side I've got a fluid transposer and a magma crucible with a ME interface in the middle and this way we can control both with it. In the system I've just got some basic resources to make test racks being some bronze, diamond, ender pearls, enderium ingots, fused quartz and silver ingots. Now you can also set up the automation for this these enderium ingots as well but I won't be showing that in the video today. I'm going to be showing you two different methods for automating tesseract production. One method is going to use a controlled supply of ender pearls, the other we're just going to constantly feed ender pearls into the system. The advantage of that is actually we can make it smaller but it's going to be up to you which one you choose on depending on how much resource you have. So first of all I'm going to start with the system that has a controlled amount of ender pearls going into it. So to start with, I've just gone and got myself an impulse item duct and a resident servo. You could probably get away with most item ducts, but I just see something creative. I'm going to use these ones. So we want to have our ender pearls coming from our ME interface and going into our magma crucible. So what we can do is set up a server that will pu always pull into here. But like I said, as we want to control the input and output, this is why we're going to use some Python. So you can see we've got the input set in to the left hand side and the output is going to be out the back. So we've put the impulse item, item duct coming out of the interface like that. Put our resident servo on here so this is going to extract an item. Um, we can whitelist it if you want and put ender pills in it. And what we're going to want here to have it is on a high redstone control. And we're going to want it to pull out four at a time because we only need a thousand the buckets which is four ender pills so it will only put four ender pills into the magma crucible so let's go and put that in there and then put those in there so what the system is always going to do here is have the ender pills in the NME in interface and when this resident servo is going to get a signal it will only allow four to be pulled out and put into the magma crucible so now we have to think of how we're going to set up this signal so next on your list to get is a ME level emitter, a crafting card and some fluid cable. I've just gone and changed this input just so we haven't got ender pearls constantly going in. So what we're going to do is we want a level emitter to be pointing at the back of this servo. Like so. So when it's powered, which it isn't at the moment, it's going to be giving off a red zone signal to here. So this will always want to be pulling out. But what we want to do is make it to come on only at a specific point. So for this, we're going to use our crafting cards. Now this completely changes this. So what we have here is emit a redstone signal while our item is crafting, or emit redstone to craft item. Well, we want to have it on the emit the redstone while the item is crafting. So then when we ask the system to craft something, it's only going to give out a redstone signal for a second or two, allowing the servo to pull out the four pills and put them into the magma crucible. So for the next part of this, we're going to be using some conduits from Ender.io. And I've just got the Ender Energy Conduit, the max one, a pressurised fluid conduit, so our fluids can travel upwards, an item conduit, and the ME conduit. The reason why I'm using the Ender.io's, in case you don't know, is you can put up to about 60 cables in a single block space. That means we can make the system much more compact. So to start off with, we're going to want to power these two devices, even though they already max power, but hey, let's just do it anyway. Just shift right click on the back like that and you can see it doesn't um, touch the interface which is cool so if we say have the power coming off the back here like so the next bit is our ME conduit now we've already got some ME glass cable over here so when we shift right click on here it should all link up whoops sorry just right click <laughs> there you go you can see that the ME glass cable links up to the ME conduit so far we've got the two out of eight channels which is fine because we've got the level emitter and the interface. Right. So then, so the next thing we've got to think about is the magma crucible is going to be using the liquid, and we want it to come out of the back. So 
So what we can do, go and do is use our pressurized fluid conduit, travel it all the way up to the top, and put it into the back of the fluid transposer. So the fluid transposer will have the back as the input. So we're going to put our pattern eventually in the AM interface. That means it also needs to have an input through its underside, like so. So then what we're also going to do is take our item conduit and run it from the top and then down, like so. So this is coming out of the top, down this tubing, and then into the interface. So then we can just go and set the output like so. Just got to remember quickly to change all these because you want to extract always. Uh, for the fluid, you want input always. And for the item conduit on here, you also want insert. And on the bottom, you want to have extract always for the liquid. So that's pretty much all your conduit set up. So all you need to do next is run off your ME conduit into your system. And we're getting close now to almost being ready to get going. So let's have a look at this then. So I've just gone and ran some more dense, some um, conduit cable from my system here and ran it into the back. And just to show you that this is all working fine, we can see we have our flu transposer. It doesn't show the magma crucible, and I think this is because you can't actually get patterns to work for it to put set amounts in. But I could be wrong there, but it doesn't really matter because we have this sort of system on the side setup. You can also see that this level emitter, it says device is online, and it still isn't doing anything, which is perfect. And you can see the end pills are still in there, and everything like that. So next we need to start to look at towards patterns. So let's get the test racks up, because three different patterns we're going to want. If you already have all the materials you need inside your ME system to create your pattern, if you go and right click on here, and then shift left click on your question mark, it'll put it in your pattern terminal for you, and you can just click right, like so. So what we're going to do is put this in our molecular assembler, because it's a crafting pattern. So what we can go and do is then craft up our empty tesseract frame, like so. Okay. So with this, we're going to go pop it in our level emitter. So just right click on the actual torch, and then you can see that I've already done that, but you can place it in this square right here, just simply right click. Now, when we click on craft, the system is going to tell this level emitter to come on. It's going to tell this resonant server to pull out four ender pills and put them in our back of our magma crucible. Let's just see that happen. Just show you. Take those out. No ender pills in there. Click on craft. One. In. So if this wasn't on the high redstone, these will start melting down. As soon as they've melted down, they're going to get extracted by our conduits and put in the top of our fluid transposer. So then we'll have a thousand resonant ender in there, ready to go into our tesseract frame to make the full tesseract. So let's ha have a look at how we're going to automate this step then, shall we? The next step in the system is to make sure you've got a tesseract frame full. And you want to have your ME system set to processing pattern. You're going to place your empty frame in here and your full one in here. And encode the pattern, like so. You can also go and craft this one up as well, change that back to crafting pattern and click right. So we're going to want to put the pattern to create the final version, just the tesseract, in the macular assembler. And we're going to want to put the one that fills the frame in the fluid transposer. So when we click craft, four underpills should go into this magma crucible. The magma crucible should melt them all down, put them up into the fluid transposer. At the same time, we've clicked. Um, and that's all due to clicking this tesseract frame craft. The empty tesseract frame is going to go into here. Once a thousand millibuckets of resonant ender goes in here, it's going to automatically fill it up to create the full frame. The full frame is going to get ejected into the ME interface and back into the system, where it's going to craft it up into this final version. So let's give that a go then, shall we? Right. So if we go and click on this tesseract here, and be quick, what we should see is the ender pill going to the bottom, like I said, and the frame going to the top. So you can see the ender pills are going through, and they're going up top here, a thousand millibuckets, and the frame is starting to fill up. So once that frame fills up, it's going to get ejected and put back into our system. 
and then what we should see is the final version crafted like so so like I said this is a, a good version if you're quite limited on some resources like ender pearls so this system won't work too well if you tell it to do 20 at once because it will craft this first frame 20 times and only pull 4 ender pills into the bottom it won't pull out 20 times 4 of the ender pills so for this we can always look at doing the other sort of style of system so this version is even smaller it only uses a 3 by 2 deep footprint while this one uses the 4 high and at least 2 wide so to start with you're going to want to use your ender conduits again and we're just going to put the energy out the back like so and what we want to do is put an emi conduit on like this as well so inside our magma crucible we've just got all the same arguments as well and what we want to do is have this set up to ender pearls coming in through the top side and the fluid coming out of the back so then what we want to do is take a pressurized fluid conduit and run this up like so so what we're going to want to do is get rid of these one of these augments so let's get rid of the allows for size of the device to be which one do we want to go for? actually we'll just get rid of the speed and then what you want to do is get the the vacuum one for it so this augment the integrated hopper apparatus it basically allows for automatic transfer into the device so as you know thermal um, expansion you can transfer out of OK because it's got some of these augments in it but you can't really transfer into it too well so what we're going to do is put this in so this time when we put our ender pills into our interface let's just turn the redstone off on this one so it doesn't run hi should see that they're starting to come in like so so that means that we don't have to have the wires come out the back also you notice that the flu has already automatically gone into this flu transposer cool what you're going to want to do is get the same pattern as before and put that into here so when you get craft once again it's going to put it into the flu transposer keep the same setup as you did before with the crafting of the empty frame and the crafting of the final version so let's try and configure this fluid transposer so as before we want the pattern coming in from the bottom and we have our fluid coming in as well from the back so that means we might as well have our finished product coming out the top again So, and you just want to set all these out again. So you've got extract all the time, you've got insert all the time, and you've got insert all the time, and extract all the time. Like so. So you can see this is much cleaner. You can probably put quite a few next to each other without any problems. If you wanted to have this little small as well, you could always run your item conduit just out the side here. And if you wanted to run another set, you could always just put them down here as well so like I said with this system once you've got it hooked up the interface is going to constantly keep on pulling ender pills out of, out of the system and place them into the crucible and this tank's eventually going to fill up and the fluid transposer is going to eventually fill up this is systems better if you know you're going to want to craft multiple test racks at the same time and you can just click 20 say and go and this system here will do it for you much better than the other system you can also use this setup for some of the other liquids in the thermal expansion, such as the jelly cryothium and the destabilized redstone. I hope I've given you a better insight into some of the different things you can do with thermal expansion other than your basic automation, and I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope to see you again soon.